Ah, welcome back, tennis fans. This is actually take two, the first one I did on complete mute. So hopefully I've not forgotten anything. But another news story from Game to Love. This time we're talking about Marta Kostyuk, the young Ukrainian player, 19 years old, really hot prospect. Me and Ben really like her, uh, exciting player. She started her campaign at Indian Wells. She won her first match against uh, Zanevska. It was a very close match. It went, I think it was like over three hours. Um, close free set. She managed to win. So really pleased about that. Um, but we're, we're here today to discuss actually what she said after the match. As you know, things happening in Ukraine is getting worse and worse. Uh, it's a topic everyone's talking about. And right now, it's extremely sad. Let's be honest. It's getting, it's getting worse. Um, and we're going to get into it on this video. But to start off, we've got Chris Clary here saying they played through pain and concern about issues much larger than tennis. And when they met on the same side of the net, Ukrainian Marta Kostyuk and Ukrainian-born uh, Marina Zanetska shed a long, tearful embrace and a message of hope. I mean, I didn't even know that. I didn't know that um, Zanetska was born in Ukraine, but I did see the end of the match and it was very teary. Both of them crying. Uh, Zanetska come over to Kostyuk, the other side of the net. They embraced and it was really nice to see. You can see here, this is the emotion going through uh, Kostyuk's face when she was to when she clinched the win on match point. And she was wearing the colours of Ukraine, the yellow and blue. She's top 50, or approaching the top 50. I generally think this girl has all the ability to sort of be pushing on sort of top 20 this year. But let's wait and see with that. The big thing I want to talk about, though, is what she said after the match. And she was talking about the Russian players and how they've acted with her. So let's go into the quote. Um, let me just translate it so it's in English. So you're saying, it's terrifying. Uh, the first few days, my whole family was there, gathered in the same house. If something had happened, I would have lost everyone. Just thinking about it, you go to bed without knowing if when you wake up, you will still have a family. It puts life into perspective. A lot of us moaning about very trivial things. Um, when it's a war, it's serious. It's life and death. It is the, the ultimate sacrifice, really. And um, you've got to really, when you're moaning about something which is really not that deep, uh, look at this and think, you know what, this is tragic. And I've, my thoughts and prayers go out to everyone in Ukraine suffering and hopefully the war can end soon. It's the only thing I can say on it. Um, another one here, this is what she was saying about the players. So you've got here saying, no Russian players come to see me. None have told me they're sorry for what their country is doing to mine. It hurts me. Their only problem right now is not being able to make transfers of money. Uh, that's what they're talking about. It's unacceptable. What do you make of this quote? I think it is uh, pretty controversial. She's kind of attacking Russian players. I mean, I'm not sure if I fully agree with it because is it the fault of the Russian players what a crazy lead is doing in their country? It's definitely not. And I feel a lot of the Russian players have spoken out and a lot of, uh, pretty much all of them. So you've got Medvedev, Rublev. I've seen him being very vocal. And the women's, you've got people like Pavlachenko speaking out. And I feel like they've done their part, but maybe none of them have actually come over to the Ukrainian players. But then you can look at it the other way. Are they a bit scared to do that? They don't know what the sacrifices are going to be. Um, they are very big in the public domain. And I don't think Putin's going to be very light on them if he, if he, if he uh, deems it sort of against his regime, which it would be. So... It's, it's a tough situation to be in. So my heart goes out to everyone, really. I feel sorry for a lot of the Russian people and players uh, because they don't want the war and they're going to have to, they're put in sort of limbo. Um, but maybe she does have a point in the fact that they could do a little bit more, um, but it's a really tough one to talk on. Uh, but I'm interested to see what you guys have to say. Let us know in the comment section below because I'm fascinated to see what you guys think. Uh, the final one I've got here is you don't have to be involved in politics to behave like a human being. Everyone knows what's going on. It hurts me every time. I come to the stadium and see those Russian players. Their statements hurt me because they are meaningless. So the statements we've been seeing from the Russian players go along the lines of no war. And I think she's a bit disappointed about that because what does no war mean? Is it sort of implying, um, because no war could potentially be um, Ukrainian should surrender. The Ukrainian people should surrender and allow Putin just to take control. That would mean no war. Um, but that's not going to happen, is it? Ukrainian people aren't going to give up. They're going to fight to the very end. It's everything. It's their whole country, their livelihoods, uh, what they've built, their whole generations of families on. And that is why I can understand what she means by that. But let me know in the comment section. What do you guys think? 
It is a controversial one. Should uh, Russian tennis players do a little bit more to support the Ukrainian players? But hopefully it's all over soon and we get some peace for Ukraine. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. If you haven't already, hit the like button, subscribe if you're new, and we'll see you for more GTL news very soon.